Another short video on uh, digital thermometers, uh, contactless digital th thermometers. This is the first one I bought years and years ago. It served me very well. It's quite accurate. It's the older model that Harbor Freight used to sell. Let's see, measuring the glass here. I measure the countertop here. It's 73 according to this. Which is probably right. This has always been real accurate for me. Unfortunately, I dropped it in the hot tub, um, and it was slow to recover, but it did eventually recover. So I bought another one, and uh, I guess this is the next one I bought, another Harbor Freight, cheaper one. It just isn't very accurate. It never has been. See, it's think 69. Uh, definitely... Uh, 74 is a much better measurement, 73. And it doesn't even track. It's not like I can say it's always X number degrees off because at different temperatures, uh, measuring something hot, measuring something cold, it doesn't even track. Um, so I bought another one later when they were on sale, not having learned my lesson. And this one is just a tiny bit better. What's it saying? 76. So it's the other way around. This one was measuring too low. This one's measuring too high. And again, it doesn't track worth, it, worth beans, even though this one's not quite as far off. I had taken this one apart and tried to see if there's any way to um, calibrate it. And I really couldn't find anything in there. There's no adjustments at all. There is one little PC board with a bunch of holes in it and a jumper, but you know, it's soldered in. I suppose I could try soldering in different holes. It's uh, cumbers cumbersome to say the least. If anybody knows anything about calibrating these or anything about getting some more accuracy out of them, I'd like to know. But this is the uh, the more economical one that Harbor Freight sells, and I've had really, really both of them are pretty poor. They're good enough for electronic usage when I want to compare, you know, transistors on one side of an amp to a transistors on the other channel of an amp something like that. They're good for comparisons, they're good for finding cold spots, but as far as absolute accuracy, they're, they're not worth being. Um, and this this guy, uh, like I said, it got dropped the hot tub a number of times. <laughs> the second time it took longer to recover. That's why I went and bought another Centec again, because I figured it wasn't going to recover. It eventually it did. And the third time I dropped it in the hot tub, it took even longer to recover. I didn't thought it ever would, but eventually it did. Apparently, moisture is getting under something and getting into some grunge and uh, taking a long time to dry out. Well, I also bought this one. This is uh, from DigiK, I think. Not DigiK, from uh, Newegg, probably. Um, it's a Ro Roswell. Roswell. And this one uh, was cheap. See, it's measuring 73 here, which is probably a degree higher. So, well, probably about right, actually. Actually, it agrees with this one within a degree. Um, this guy has been pretty good for a cheap one. It's within its rated accuracy ratings. It tracks pretty well, you know, against this guy at least. Um, so Roswell cheapy, pretty good. I see the more expensive Roswell has the same accuracy ratings. And it's nice that it lights up. You know, when you press the trigger you don't have to hit a second button to get to light up. Um, this one you gotta hit a second button to light it up at night, or turn the laser on even, or to light it up. Or all second bucket buttons. Which it, in the dark is a little more to fuss with. This one just does them both automatically. Gives you the laser and the light um, automatically. And that's really convenient. Plus this one runs on double uh, A cells. Which is super convenient too. Or actually the triple A's. But anything, anything other than a 9 volt battery. 9 volt battery is so expensive. Hard to keep charge. But these two 